All right, we have to graph this equation right here. So this equation is already in a nice graphable format. It is in slope-intercept form. Now the constant over here on the end, this is our y-intercept. We know our line is going to cross the y-axis at positive 2. So we're going to make a mark at positive 2, which is right here. Now from there, we're going to have to make a second point because you need at least two points to make a line. So the slope or the rate of change that is located in front of your x, that's always the coefficient of x, says that it is a negative slope because of this negative sign right here. So from this point, we have to go down 2 and over 3. Because the slope is negative 2 thirds, we're going to go down 1, 2, and over 1, 2, 3, and make another point. And from there, we can continue the same pattern. We can go down 2 and over 3 more. And once you feel like you have enough points, although you really only need 2, but you'd have to line up your ruler perfectly, you would draw a line that passes through those points like that. And voila, that's all there is to it. This line represents this equation right here. All right, let's go to the next problem. All right, we have to write the equation of this line in y equals mx plus b form. So we know our equation is going to start with y equals, and we're going to figure out the slope and write that as the coefficient of x. And at the end, we just write where our line crosses the y-axis. And we can see that our line intersects the y-axis right at negative 3. That means at the end we just write minus 3. So that's the easy part is identifying the y-intercept where it crosses the y-axis. Now be careful, some students want to put 1 because they confuse the x-intercept with the y-intercept. All right, so to find the slope, all you need to do is identify at least two points on the line. So like here's another point, another point, and another point. Now we just have to see what the rate of change is. So I'm going to start with this point here and go to this point. Now we see that the line is going upward, so it's going to be a positive slope, and we start with our rise. So we're going to start here at 3 on the y-axis and go up to the second point, which ends at 6. So we go up 3 and then over 1. And 3 over 1 can be simplified to just being 3. So the equation is y equals 3x minus 3. All right, let's go to the next problem. Okay, so what we want to do here first is plot this point, negative 6, negative 3. So negative 6 is here, and then we go down 3. All right, this point is positive 6, positive 5. So we go over to 6 and up 5. And we create a line that is passing through those two points. All right, now we're going to plot the other two points, which uh, is negative 6, 5. So we're going to go to negative 6, positive 5, and negative 1, negative 5. Then we're going to go ahead and make our line here. All right, now we can see that our two lines are intersecting precisely at this location right here. The x value is negative 3, all right, and the y value is negative 1. So that is where those two lines intersect each other. All right, let's go to the next problem. So what we have to do here is we have to use this equation to find each output for each one of these given inputs. Now, in general, x is always considered our input and y is considered our output. So we're going to put these values into this equation and solve for each one of these. So basically we have four quick calculations to do, okay? So this function rule is telling us that the value of y is going to be equal to taking one half of whatever the x is and then adding six to it. So I'm going to start by taking one half of the first x, one half of negative eight. And after taking half of negative 8, we're going to add 6. Now, half of negative 8 is negative 4. And then after we add 6, that's going to give us positive 2. So y is equal to 2 when we have an input of negative 8. All right. Now we're going to cut the next input in half. So let's take negative 2 and cut that in half. Half of negative 2 is negative 1. 
and then we're going to add the 6, and that's going to give us positive 5. All right? Now, let's take half of 0. Well, you can't take half of nothing, so that still leaves you with nothing. 1 half times 0 is still 0, and then add 6. That is just going to give us 6. All right, now let's take half of this input. Half of 6 is 3, and 3 plus 6 is 9.